From Wisconsin, Oregon, Illinois, from Tennessee, Indiana, Maryland, from all over these United States they came. George Shaw, Buddy Young, Bobby Boyd, George Taliaferro, Gino Marchetti, Sally Tope, Ordell Bracey, Artie Donovan, John United, and many, many more. They came from large universities and small colleges. They came to play professional football for the Baltimore Colts. In the lean years, the good years, the championship years, they provided Colt fans with thrill after thrill. This is the story of the Baltimore Colts and their golden decade. Hi folks, I'm Chuck Thompson. Over the years, it's been our pleasure to broadcast the play-by-play -play of the Baltimore Colt games on radio and television. It's impossible to recount the number of times a brilliant play sent a chill down our spine. Yours too, I'll bet. The moments when the Colts really battled back. And who knows when we first shouted into the microphone, go to war, Miss Agnes. And then there were the disappointments, losing a close one or getting clobbered, the good years, the poor years, they all added up to great action years with our Baltimore Colts. And what Colt fan will ever forget the speed of the immortal Buddy Young? Five feet, four inches of dynamite. The year, 1953. The Colts versus the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles kick off and watch Buddy go. He always finished those cross-country runs with a flourish. Alan the Horse Amici broke in with the Colts in 1955, and how the horse broke in. Against the Bears, he got his first chance to carry the ball and started off a great career with a touchdown gallop that covered 79 yards. Memorial Stadium, 1954. Gary Kikorian from Stanford University leads the Colts against the 49ers. He treats his fellow Californians with little respect as he hits halfback Royce Wombo for the winning touchdown. Remember Fred Enk? Well, here's that young man in action in 1953 against the Bears. On the receiving end of this aerial, number 82 is Dan Edwards. Jersey number 82 was destined to be enshrined in the hearts of Colt fans by another great Colt end, Raymond Berry from Southern Methodist. The 1960 Detroit Lion team won't soon forget Mr. Berry. Talk about A for effort. Hold that film right there. It can't be done, but don't tell the Lions. All the great catches aren't made by the offensive team. Old warhorse Bert Rechichar just loved to pick one up here and run over anything or anyone in his path. This Rechichar TD brought the Colts a win over the 53 Bears. Colt guard Joe Campanella has his moment in the sun against the Lions in 1955 with his sparkling interception. The art of picking off enemy aerials was really mastered by Colt defensive ace Milt Davis. During his Colt career, Davis snagged 27 of these misguided missiles, a Colt record at the time of Milt's retirement. In Kizar Stadium in 1959, Davis shows the 49ers his stuff as he hauls in a YA tittle pass and dodges for 58 yards to the San Francisco end zone. The Los Angeles Coliseum. 
Andy Nelson at his defensive best as he blocks Danny Villanueva's field goal. On the ground, cold defensive lines have left their mark on many NFL quarterbacks. Ten-year veteran Gino the Giant Marchetti blasts Green Bay quarterback Bart Starr. Hmm. It's a great day in 1961 as the fired-up Colts upset the Packers 45-21. Bill Pellington is the other half of that 10-year Colt defensive combo. The Rutgers rocket dishes out the same kind of medicine to Ram quarterback Ratkowski at the Coliseum in 1961. The 1954 Colt defensive line was known as the Ferocious Five. Watch as Tom Finnan and Don Joyce barge in on their quarterback George Blanda in Wrigley Field. The first Colt to be selected as All-League was halfback Tom Keene in 1953. Keen shows us one of the reasons for his selection as he picks off a bear pass to help the Colts to a 16-14 win. Defensive back Don Shula on the 55 Colts squad gives a demonstration of second effort against the Redskins. You could get up to be knocked down again in those days. Buddy Young against the 49ers in 1954. He takes a pass from Kikori. Young's down on the seven, but he's not out. You might call this the origination of the Valley Series. Both fans will long remember the explosive runbacks of Carl Tassin. Gaucho, as his teammates called him, blast off against the Green Bay Packers in 1953 for 69 yards behind the blocking of Colt and number 89, Elmer Wingate. Six years later, it's the same tacit, only this time the bad guys are the Los Angeles Rams and the Colts are the world champions. Carl looks like he stopped at the 10, but he pops out like a grape from its skin and squirts 99 yards, escorted by Raymond Brown, John Sample, and Don Shinnick. The Colts beat the Rams 45 to 26 as Tassif tied Jerry Williams' NFL record for the longest return of a field goal attempt. That same afternoon in the Los Angeles Coliseum, Colt linebacker Dick Samansky picks off a Billy Wade toss and turns it into a six-pointer for the Colts while teddy bear Don Shinnick shows his enthusiasm. The golden decade of the Colts. Ten years of thrill-packed professional football. A lot of water has gone over the dam since the Colts made their debut in the NFL. And here in the 1953 press guide, we found a couple of quotes we thought you, you might enjoy. Gino Marchetti, defensive end. Gino works in a restaurant in California during the off season and hopes to have one of his own someday. Defensive back Don Shula. Shula considers all sports as his hobby and plans to coach in either high school or college later on. Buddy Young, halfback at just five feet four inches. He's known as the only man in the world who can block you at the knees without bending down. And how about some of these names on the early teams? Sisto Averno, Dick Barwagen, Alex Agassi, Monty Brethauer, Zali Toth, and how many of you remember the name John Husvar? Quite a fullback was this young man. This run against the 53 Packers is just a sample of Husvar's play. When you're talking about Colt fullbacks, you just have to mention the old warhorse Joe Perry. Watch as number 62 Palmer Pyle blocks Bob Long. And number 68 Alex Sandusky takes out Clendon Thomas. Joe uses a little of his own razzle-dazzle to go in for the TD, but unfortunately pulled up lame and was out for the rest of the season. 1955 and the greatest fullback of the Colts' first 10 years, Alan Amici booms through the Detroit line and goes all the way.
The success of every team is blocking and tackling. If cold back Mike Summer will wait just a minute, Art Spinney and George Preeds will pave the way for a great run against the Rams in 1959. In 1955 at the Polo Grounds, Colt back L.G. Dupre must have thought the Giants had an invisible tackler on the field. With some great moves, Dupre is on his way to assure Colt TD. Or is he? And here's the case of the forgotten man, the Colts and the Rams in 1961 on a fourth down punting situation. Cold back Jim Welsh takes a direct snap. Tom Matty throws a block to get him loose. And when the Rams remember, it's too late. The moral of the play is you don't have to kick on fourth down. Let's move the clock back to 1953. Fred Ank throws, and all-time cold great George Taliaferro takes his pass right out of a Redskins' hands, and he didn't even say thanks. In the 1955 draft meeting, among the cold draft choices were All-American Alan Amici of Wisconsin, Dick Szymanski of Notre Dame, and George Shaw of Oregon. Many Colt fans feel the 55 draft was the start of the Colts' march toward their first world championship. With Shaw's passing, the Colts now had the air arm to go with the running attack. The Colts opened the season with three straight wins over the Bears, the Lions, and the Packers. Each win was considered an upset. Blending the old with the new, the 55 Colts began to flex their muscles. At Milwaukee against the Packers, rookie quarterback Shaw hits veteran Buddy Young. And Young legs it the rest of the way for a Colts six-pointer. Later in the same game, Shaw, displaying the poise of a veteran, hits sophomore Colt Jim Mutchler for another TD. Still 1955, and the Los Angeles Rams, who won the Western Conference title that year, find the rejuvenated Colts mighty tough. Our ground-level camera covers a pass from rookie Shaw to freshman Colt Amici. On the next play, the horse scores, and the Colts hold the Rams to a 17-17 tie. Displaying his versatility, Shaw runs the ball against the 49ers at Memorial Stadium as the Colts button down win number five of the 55 season. An injury to George Shaw in 1956 against the Bears brought a rookie quarterback off the bench. John Unitas was to fill page after page in the Colt record book. Most passes completed. Most passes completed in one season. Most passes completed in one single game. Most yards gained passing. Most yard gained passing in one season. And most yards gained in one single game. Aside from his own great ability, one of the keys to United's success was the ironclad protection offered by all-pro tackle Jim Parker. Watch in slow motion as Big Jim fences out a determined Andy Robustelli while John completes to Jerry Richardson on a typical Colt aerial strike. But the man most often seen on the other end of Unitas' precision pitches was number 82, Raymond Berry. Berry's clutch receptions were the rule rather than the exception as he became the Colts' record-setting receiver of the golden decade. In 1957 against the 49ers, the Colts fight for the Western Conference title. Unitas winds up and finds Lenny Moore Moore goes all the way, tying the longest completed cold pass and run play set by George Shaw and Buddy Young in 1955. 
against the same 49ers at Memorial Stadium, John completes to Jimmy Orr. This has been described as the greatest juggling act of all time. Unitas also holds cold records with more touchdown passes lifetime, most touchdown passes one season, and most touchdown passes in one game. And the big one John set, a National Football League mark, most consecutive games throwing a touchdown pass, beginning in 1956 and ending against the Rams in 1960, John Unitas hit with a touchdown pass in 47 consecutive games. This record, which more than doubled the previous one set by Cecil Isbell of 23 consecutive games, will go down in the history of cold football as one of the greatest individual records of all time. One of the most exciting players to ever wear a cold uniform, Lenny Moore from Penn State. The year, 1958. The Colts and the 49ers at Memorial Stadium, and the Colts need a win to clinch their first Western Conference title. Trailing 27-7 at halftime, they made one of the most sensational second-half comebacks in NFL history. Determination, you bet. Sprung by the cold forward wall, Lenny Moore runs, cuts, zigs, zags, 73 yards and doesn't stop until he's in the end zone with a touchdown that puts Baltimore ahead. Against the Lions in 1960, the Colts lost a tough one. It looked for a minute as if the Colts had it won when Unitas faded back with less than a minute to play and hit Lenny. Hold it right there and notice, ladies and gentlemen, his feet never touch the ground. If you think that's something, how about the time in 1959 against the 49ers when old Spats got turned around and backed into a score? Go, Lenny, go. But the six points on the scoreboard still read the same way. Perhaps the greatest example of the elusiveness of Lenny Moore is shown in this run against the Packers in 1961. holds a fistful of Colts scoring records, but we doubt if he ever got a bigger kick out of a score than Artie Donovan and Gino Marchetti. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, watch out. The Colts and the Bears in 1957. The Bears are in trouble as Artie Donovan lays it on quarterback Ratkowski. Zeke decides he's better off without that ball, and Gino the Giant obliges to ring up a Colt TD. Four years earlier, against those same Bears at Memorial Stadium, another Colt, Bert Rechichar by name, kicked up his heels with this booming 56-yard field goal to put his name in the NFL record books. Another famous Colt field goal that didn't go in the record books, but certainly earned a spot in Colt fans' memory books, was Steve Myra's 20-yarder in the Colts' first championship game at Yankee Stadium in 1958. This three-pointer gained the Colts a tie with the Giants and sent the game into an unprecedented sudden death period. The Giants received to open the extra period, but were stopped cold on a third and one situation by the big Colt defensive line. Don Joyce, Big Daddy Lipscomb, Steve Myra, Bill Pellington, Art Donovan, and Gino Marchetti. And then John Unitas and company took over. A pass to Raymond Berry for a first down. Amici up the middle on a draw. Then Unitas, the gopher broke guy from Louisville, pulls out all the stops and hits Jim Mutchler, who goes out on the one. Then the play that caps the golden decade of the Colts. 
The Colt line opens a hole and Amici puts the Colts on top of the world. Executive Vice President Don Kellett had achieved their goal, a world championship for their Baltimore Colts. One year later, Coach Weeb Eubank led his charges to their second world title. In this rematch, the Colts made midgets of the Giants from New York to the tune of 31 to 6. That's it. The high points in 10 great years with the Baltimore Colts. What'll happen in the next decade? More world championships? We hope so. Plenty of action, that's for sure. And the rookies will keep right on coming, looking for a place in the sun. And the veterans? Well, some of them seem to go on forever. But eventually, Father Time taps each one on the shoulder. And I know there's a, a lady up in heaven that is very proud of the way you people in bowling have treated a boy from the Bronx. Thank you. All-pro tackle Art Donovan truly lived every minute of the golden decade of the Colts. The golden decade of the Baltimore Colts has been another National Beer Sports presentation brought to you by Quality National Beer and your neighborhood National Beer dealer.